Hi everybody, this is Dr. Carolyn here, and we're starting the part one of a two-part series about do I have to be thin or thinner in order to be healthy? So I hope you will listen to both parts and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, that way you can get notifications of the next videos coming up right away. So let's get started. I have so many patients who come to me um, absolutely certain, and they've been told oftentimes by healthcare practitioners that they have to be thin or thinner in order to be healthy. And usually these are women in particular who've been dieting, hating their bodies, being obsessed about food, or who have been, experienced behaviors such as binge eating, compulsive overeating or food addiction. And they may identify as emotional eaters as well. So some of them are as young as 25 and as old as 70. So you might think that maybe by the time we get older, we'd give up the ghost of wanting to, uh, you know, lower that number on the scale, but apparently not. So what they all have in common is this desperate, it really is a desperate feeling that I really want to be healthy. And I've been told over and over that I need to change that number on the scale in order to uh, be healthy. I need to lose weight in order to be healthy. And we know it's, you know, many people say it's no longer politically correct to admit that you want to be thin for appearance sake. So now it's all about something called healthism. So healthism can be defined as a preoccupation or obsession with personal health as a primary focus uh, for defining uh, achievement and, and, and uh, the, the definition and achievement of well-being. And this goal is often thought to be attained by weight loss. So in other words, you kind of feel like a failure if you're not able to achieve this uh, state of weight loss or this action of weight loss. So the bottom line is all of that still puts the focus on the number on the scale. And even recently it's come out again, this, you know, bias towards weight as being the primary factor related to health. And you see it in articles about the COVID-19 being associated higher uh, risk being associated with COVID-19 in people living in larger bodies. But honestly, no matter what you've heard, I wanna help you with some myths and some facts. So let's start with the myths first. The first myth is that fatness takes years off of your life. In a large review of studies, research on the impact of weight on health, it was found that 87% of the studies on people who were defined as level one obesity by BMI, in other words, a BMI, body mass index of 30 to 35, the majority were as healthy as people who were in the quote unquote normal weight category. That's 87% of studies showed that the first level of body mass index that defines obesity, that the people in that level were as healthy as people in the normal category. Also, going into higher body mass index categories, 67% of studies on people with BMI of 35 to 40 and above 40, which by the way is only 6% of the US population, showed no difference in health risk from normal weight individuals, including no decrease in lifespan. So that's myth number one, that fatness takes years off your life, and it does not. Myth number two, fat causes disease. Well, think about this. While rates of obesity, as determined by body mass index, have more than doubled, the rates for some of the diseases that have been uh, said to be 
caused by obesity, like for example, diabetes, have not doubled. So rates of obesity have doubled, rates of diabetes have increased by nine or 10%. So you would think if fat causes diabetes, then the rates of diabetes would be much higher and they're not. Secondly, let's look at heart disease. Rates for heart disease have actually decreased, not increased, despite the increase in um, people living in larger bodies. Number three myth, myth number three, we have evidence that weight loss improves health. Okay, so I don't know if you know this, but most studies on weight and health maybe are one year studies. Sometimes you'll see a two or three year study, maximum five year study. The National Institutes of Health, which is the number one research institution in our country, that's the National Institutes of Health, ran a $15 million study over 15 years. And they were unable to prove that a therapeutic diet and weight loss could reduce risk for strokes, heart attacks, and heart disease. Should I repeat that? <laughs> <laughs> the National Institutes of Health ran a 15-year study. They spent $15 million on this study, and they could not prove that diet and exercise, I'm sorry, that diet and weight loss could reduce your risk for stroke, heart, heart attacks, and heart disease. Now, some good things did come out of the study. For example, participants were able to keep off about 6% of their weight. So I know many of you, like do the numbers if you weigh 200 pounds, that's about 12 pounds. Um, many of you have lost and gained 12 to 20 pounds easily. Uh, so in the same in this big study. Another positive thing that came out of the study, the diabetics were better able to manage their diabetes without medication. But this huge study over this long period of time was not able to show that weight loss improves health risk. So you may be thinking, ah, well, if that's not the answer, you know, what have I been doing all my life trying to lose weight when it doesn't impact my, my health at all? So what can you do to improve your health? Well, here's some examples of what we absolutely do know for sure. For example, and I'm just giving you examples, uh, cancer risks are more related to the type of food you eat than the number on the scale. So we know that increasing foods that are high in antioxidants, particularly cruciferous vegetables like Brussels sprouts, cabbage, uh, broccoli, etc., lower cancer risk. For diabetes, we know beyond a shadow of a doubt, that physical activity lowers your risk without changing the number on the scale. So physical activity lowers your risk for diabetes even without weight loss. And number three, to lower heart disease risk, the most important thing is don't smoke, or if you do smoke, quit. Keep your blood pressure under control and be physically active. I hope this is sinking in for you. I know. It's, it's really hard to give up that belief that you have to lose weight in order to be healthy. Uh, there's a couple more sobering facts that I wanna offer to you. Number one, being more satisfied with your body in studies and research studies has been associated with better health outcomes no matter what your weight is. And why, just think about that for a moment. If you are hating on your body and you're constantly feeling negative towards your body, it's unlikely that you're gonna to wanna to take care of your body. So we know in studies that if you're more satisfied with your body, you're more likely to do the things that nurture your body and promote good health. The second sobering fact is that yo-yo dieting, which, you know, let's, let's say that the majority of American women in particular and an increasing number of American men have been caught up in 
what's the next fad diet? You know, it's the intermittent fasting, it's the keto. I wrote a whole blog on the keto diet on my Psychology Today blog, and I probably got, I don't know, a thousand comments from people who are big, big, big keto advocates. So I, I'm just saying being on any diet doesn't work and being on diet after diet after diet, which is yo-yo dieting, is thought to cause harm to your body. Dieting actually makes, uh, makes your weight go up in the long run. And you probably have figured that out. If you've been on multiple diets, you know you lose a certain amount and then you gain even more than you lost, right? So that's, you know, that should be a sobering um, recognition because uh, for many people, they spend a lot of money going to diet programs that then end up helping them in the short, I, I don't even want to say helping in the short term because there's so much damage that's done to diets, damage to your self-esteem, feeling like a failure, blaming yourself because you couldn't stay on a restrictive diet, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Finally, the bottom line is, let's face some real facts. Not everybody is gonna be blonde or blue-eyed or tall. I know you can dye your hair and you can put in colored contacts, but I'm saying, you know, not everybody's gonna be a natural blonde or not everybody's gonna be whatever your ideal body shape or your ideal body look is. I remember reading about uh, the woman who just was obsessed with looking like Angelina Jolie. There's honestly, there's no way that you're gonna look like somebody else in the media unless you share their genetic makeup. So in the same way, not all of us will be thin no matter how hard you try. And as you've seen, many of you have spent, what, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years trying to be thin, and it has not worked. How much more of your life, your time, your energy do you want to spend on this particular project? So ask yourself that question. And this is what we call poodle science. And I want you to, I put it in the show notes, a link to the Poodle Science video, which I, I think you'll find really interesting and a fun way of looking at this kind of serious topic. Uh, but check that out, the Poodle Science video. And finally, just as a reminder, again, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, help me out there and help yourself out. That way you'll get notifications when videos are released. And just remember, we have an anchor program starting very soon. The anchor program is an online non-diet program for binge eating, emotional eating, and food addiction. If you're, if you're done with diets, then you're the kind of person who should work with me. If you're tired of bouncing around from one diet to another, being obsessed about your weight, or waiting to live your full, complete, desirable life until you can be thin, you can schedule a free consult to talk about how to free yourself from binge eating, how to find help with food addiction or overcome emotional eating. All of that is in the show notes. I hope this has been helpful. I'll see you next time. I'm Dr. Carolyn. Bye-bye.